Hi friends, today in the first class we will discuss about the transportation problems. In this class we will discuss on the introduction about the transportation problems and to find initial basic feasible solution by various methods available in transportation method. So here there are five different methods which are available in transportation to find the initial basic feasible solution. The first one, Northwest Corner Rule, which is also known as Stepping Stone Method. Second one, Row Minima Method. Third one, Column Minima Method. Fourth one, Matrix Minima Method, which is also known as Lowest Cost Entry Method. And the finally, the Ogles Approximation Method, which is also known as Unit Cost Penalty Method. We'll discuss one by one in the next slide. Coming to the introduction of transportation problem, the transportation problem dates back to 1941 when F.L. Hitchcock presented his study on the distribution of product from several sources to numerous localities. In his study, Hitchcock uh, described, discussed about the transferring of goods from different sources to different localities with a minimum transportation cost. From then, the transportation model came into existence. Coming to the definition of transportation problem, transportation problem is to transport various amounts of single homogeneous commodity that are initially stored at various origins to different destinations in such a way that the total transportation cost is minimum. That means in a transportation problem, when you are transferring goods, it should be considered as a single homogeneous commodity. That means when you transfer goods, uh, it should be of same kind. It should not be of different uh, categories or different items. Because when you transfer goods from one location to another location, from one uh, location to another location, if it is the same products, then the transportation cost will be same. If you take different commodities or heterogeneous commodities like X, Y, Z, which will be having different cost of transportation, because of that, the transport transportation cost when you are calculating will not be possible. So because of that, you need to consider as a single homogeneous commodity to calculate the transportation cost from various origin to different destinations to get the total transportation cost as a minimum value. To make a more clear about uh, the transportation problem and why we need to go for the different methods to calculate the transportation cost. So here we have an example with uh, the pictures shown here. See, this is the factory one, this is a factory two, this is a factory three, where the products are being manufactured. It is called as source or where you are going to supply the goods. And whatever manufacture uh, the products uh, from A1, A2, A3 factories, that will be transferred to different cities or the different destinations or even it is called as a warehouses. It is called destinations or even where you have the actual demand. So that is called as B1, B2, B3, B4. For example, you manufacture some goods here and the same kind of goods you manufacture in the factory two and even in the factory three and it will be transferred to all the warehouses as shown by the arrow marks. That is from factory one to B1, a1 to B2, A1 to B3, A1 to B4. Similarly, from A2 to like this, when you want to calculate uh, which route and from which factory to which warehouse and uh, to calculate that transportation cost, you need to calculate so many combinations, permutation combinations. It will be very numerous uh, calculations you get. It is very difficult to identify and uh, get the solution very quickly so to determine this transportation cost we are going to solve by different methods as we discussed in the first uh, uh, slide uh, northwest corner rule row minima column minima or matrix minima or even by google's approximation method so now this pictorial diagram whatever it is shown it will be converted into a tabular column or in the matrix form it will be given so these are the sources where uh, the number of items it will be manufactured 
and these are the destinations where actually the demand or the product requirement will be there and when you are transferring from location 1 to location warehouse 1 that is C11 this is C11 it is nothing but the cost of transportation from A1 to B1 and C12 is nothing but the cost of transportation from factory 1 to warehouse 2 similarly when you take uh, the factory 2 the cost of transportation goods from A2 to B1 is nothing but C221, C222 to B2. Similarly, when you take the cost of transportation from A3 to different warehouses, C31, C32, C33, C44 is the cost of transportation cost. And this entire thing, it will be represented in the matrix form or the tabular form. So from that tabular form, you will be able to calculate what is the total transportation cost to transfer all the goods whatever it is manufactured at different factories to different destinations with a minimum transportation cost as we discussed to calculate transportation cost from different sources to different destinations when you have very few uh, sources and few destinations and it is very easy and even with the uh, trial and error method you can calculate and you can get the solution but when you have m sources and n destinations it is very difficult so then definitely you need to go for a transportation methods which you which we discussed in the beginning now let us say a i be the number of supply units available at the sources i that is i is equal to one two three it can be up to m and b suffix j be the number of demand units required at destinations j that is j is equal to 1 to n and let us see c suffix ij which represents the unit transportation cost for transporting units from the source i to destination j so whatever it is given here uh, like from 1 to m or 1 to n uh, different sources and different destinations our main objective of the problem is to transport the goods from source to destination with the total transportation cost as a minimum and when you are calculating the total transportation cost to minimum you should carefully uh, check the problem uh, the demand and the supply whatever it is given that should match exactly or uh, that should satisfy the exactly then only you can able to calculate the problem the problem should be balanced transportation problem now we'll see uh, the problem find the initial basic feasible solution of the following transportation problem look at the problem here there are different factories which are given and there are different warehouses which are given warehouses w1 w2 w3 w4 and three factories f1 f2 f3 and whatever cell values it is represented here 19 30 50 all these cell values it is called as a the cost of transportation that is from factory 1 to warehouse 1 the cost of transportation is 19 rupees from factory 1 to warehouse 2 the cost of transportation of single goods is 30 units or 30 rupees so similarly from factory 3 to warehouse 3 if you want to transfer one item then it costs rupees 70 so these are the values which are given in the matrix it is called as a the transportation cost values and the last column it is called as a factory capacity that means whatever uh, in the factories f1 f2 f3 it is possible to manufacture maximum the supply it is given 7 9 18 that is in factory 1 there is there is a capacity of 7 units and factory 2 9 capacity and factory 3 there is a capacity of 18 units for supply and there is a demand or the requirement at different warehouses w1 w2 w3 this is the various requirement of 5 units 8 units 7 units and 14 units in different warehouses before you start solving this uh, problem or any transportation problem you need to check whether the transportation problem given is balanced transportation problem or not whether it is a given transportation problem is balanced or not so how to check that uh, the problem is balanced or not means 
Now count the supply whatever it is given here. 7 plus 9 plus 18. It is 34. Now check what is the requirement of the warehouse 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 plus 8 plus 7 plus 14. Okay. How much it comes? Again it is 34. That means both supply as well as the demand. It is matching same. Hence the transportation problem whatever it is given. It is called as the balanced transportation problem. Once the transportation problem is balanced then you can go for solving the initial basic feasible solution by any one of the following methods. Coming to the first method of uh, transportation cost, transportation problem, Northwest corner rule, which is also called as stepping stone method, or the first method which is invented to uh, calculate the transportation cost. As we discussed, uh, the whatever values it is given in the cell, it is called as the transportation cost values from different factories to different warehouses. And here I have written separately instead of in the table that is warehouse requirements as well as the factory capacity uh, to make it more clear when you are solving the problem so that you don't get confusion with the, the cost values as well as whatever supply as well as the requirement which is given here. And when you are writing this table, please see that the cost values whatever you are representing in the table that should be written in the bottom corner of the bottom right side corner of the cell so that you can make allocations in the cell later there okay now we will go for solving the problem now in northwest corner what this northwest corner it says means north means the topmost cell and west means leftmost cell this is northmost and this is westmost so in this entire ma uh, matrix when you take uh, this entire cell uh, the table which is the cell northwest most corner uh, this is when you take this uh, table this cell becomes this entire row becomes the north row and when you take the west side and this column becomes the west side so when you take uh, uh, the cell north and west both uh, corner so this cell comes to the northwest corner and whichever cell which comes to northwest corner please try uh, to draw uh, a square mark or a rectangular mark in that box now look at the values of warehouse requirement and the factory capacity what is required uh, in the warehouse w1 you require five units of uh, goods it is required for warehouse 1 but what is the supply you have in the factory 1 you have 7 supply but you don't want 7 you want only 5 which is required for warehouse 1 we can take 5 units whatever it is required here write down 5 units ok huh? write down uh, 5 units whatever it is required you have taken completely 5 units to transfer factory 1 to warehouse 1 and out of 7 units whatever you have uh, supplied from the factory you have consumed 5 and still there will be 2 more unit, units which will be remaining in the factory 1 so this is called as north west corner method so again once you complete this one please check whether the supply or the requirement supply or requirement is completed so here the requirement is completed Please see here, whatever required for the warehouse 1, it is completely utilized. So now what you can do, you can just simply strike out this uh, column so that you don't get any confusion while solving the other uh, cells here. So what we will do, we will uh, just take uh, a thin line and we will uh, strike it out uh, this column. Okay, now the left out uh, the problem or the table will be this one. 30, 50, 10, 30, 40, 60, 80, 70, 20. So now in this matrix, now again take uh, the same concept northwest corner. In this again, when you take the northwest corner cell, so this 30, whatever value it is shown, this cell becomes the northwest cell. So now try to allocate uh, the units to uh, this corresponding cell uh, to 30 units. So what is required in the warehouse 2? It is 
8 it is required but what is available here uh, available is only 2 so when it is available only 2 you can take only maximum of 2 units not more than that though it is required 8 you cannot take 8 from the factory 1 because already 5 units it is consumed by warehouse 1 so only 2 is uh, left there so you can take 2 from factory 1 and still out of 8 uh, only 2 you have taken and 6 more it is required for warehouse 2 now after uh, looking at uh, what you call uh, the requirement and the capacity here the capacity is completed factory 1 capacity is completed now what you can do you can just simply uh, erase uh, the factory 1 uh, from the matrix because this entire uh, values it is completely utilized whatever it is given in the factory 1 similarly now whatever uh, cells it is uh, left now 30 40 60 80 70 20 this uh, uh, matrix in this matrix again check for northwest corner which is a northwest corner 30 is a northwest corner now try to allocate number of units to this cell so how many required here 6 is required how many available in the factory to 9 is available but we require only 6 we will take only 6 here out of 9 and we will try to allocate to the cell there okay so here uh, to this cell to this cell we try to allocate 6 units whatever it is required here they have completely utilized whatever it is required for warehouse 2 and out of 9 out of 9 we have taken 6 and still there will be 3 remaining in the factory 2 now looking at uh, the warehouse uh, requirement and the supply so here the requirement it is completely utilized for warehouse 2 now you can just simply strike out the warehouse 2 you can simply strike out warehouse 2 now because it is utilized completely and now uh, the left out cells are only these four 40 60 20 70 so out of these four cells which cell becomes the northwest corner 40 is the northwest corner how many required seven how many available three but only three is available i cannot take all seven so i can take maximum three to this cell please write down three to that cell so write down 3 units to warehouse 3 from factory 2 so out of uh, 7 you have taken 3 still you require 4 more to warehouse 3 and here uh, what is completed now here in this factory supply whatever it is here factory capacity it is completely utilized so please strike out that uh, column uh, sorry row from the matrix so you can completely you can strike out this one so now uh, the left out uh, cells are only 70 and 20 here 70 and 20 it is left so again in this 70 and 20 what is a northwest corner so 70 cell becomes the northwest corner now try to allocate values to this cell so when you try to allocate units to that cell so how many required for this cell 70 cell so here it is required 4 but available is 18 so out of 18 if you take 4 no, there are 14 it will be remaining so you have taken completely 4 from the cell here and now this warehouse 3 is completely utilized you can strike out or you can leave it now the left out cell is only the last one that is 20 so now try to allocate uh, units to this cell how many required to the warehouse 4 so 14 it is required how many it is available here again 14 it is available so you can take maximum of 14 here so now the problem is completed because all the cells are completely uh, utilized uh, uh, completely allocated and you can check even the factory is there any items remaining here and any requirements it is remaining here 
no items remaining no capacity remaining so the problem is completed now multiply all the units whatever you allocated that means here 5 means from factory 1 you are transferring 5 goods to warehouse 1 and from factory 1 to warehouse 2 you are transferring 2 goods at a cost of 5 into 19 2 into 30 rupees 6 items into 30 rupees like this you need to calculate so here 5 into 19 plus 2 into 30 plus 6 into 30 so if you multiply and add all these allocated values you will get the final transportation cost that is initial basic feasible solution so here you can see initial basic feasible solution whatever we got from the above table is 5 into 19 2 into 30 6 into 30 3 into 40 4 into 70 14 into 20 whatever we have allocated so totally we got 1015 rupees as a total transportation cost as a initial basic feasible solution second method is row minima method so in row minima method we will allocate uh, the number of units as uh, the transportation of goods from factory to different warehouses in the row wise fashion so coming to the first row here we need to select the lowest cost in the first row so you have 19 30 50 and 10 are the cost values out of these four cost values 10 is the lowest cost value so first try to allocate as many as possible to this cell then you allocate to the other cells now we will allocate so here it is required is sub 14 and available is only 7 so because of that I can take maximum 7 units to this cell so write down 7 units to the first cell it is here so 7 now taken completely 7 whatever it is available in the factory 1 and out of 14 required you have utilized 7 and 7 more it is needed to the warehouse 4 now looking at uh, the warehouse requirement and the factory capacity the factory capacity is completely utilized so what you can do you can erase that row from the matrix like this okay now the left out matrix is only second row and third row now in the second row row wise the second row what is the lowest cost here 30 is the lowest cost and what is required for uh, that cell 8 is required and what is available here 9 is available so here as per the requirement I can take maximum 8 uh, units to this cell ok though 9 is available I do not want 9 because the requirement itself 8 no, there is no need for going for 9 units still one more unit it will be remaining in the factory 2 so what is completed now factory 2 oh, in the factory 2 1 is available but whereas warehouse 2 requirement is completely fulfilled so what you can do you can just erase uh, that fact warehouse 2 from the matrix so still the second row is not yet completed because 70 40 60 still it is remaining only the column is eliminated here but still the row is remaining so out of these three values the lowest value is 40 so now try to allocate to this cell as many as possible 7 is required but available in the factory is only one unit now you can allocate maximum one unit to that cell you can allocate maximum one unit to this cell so out of 7 you have taken one, 1 and still there will be 6 required and here 1 completely utilized and 0 it is available now what you can do you can erase the factory to because it is completely utilized now the left out uh, row is the last one in the last row what is the lowest value 40 8 already it is cancelled so you cannot take this cell 70 20 so out of these three values 20 is the lowest cell so now try to allocate as many as possible to this cell now you take uh, 20 to this uh, to this cell so required is 7 available is 18 so only required 7 I can take out of 18 if I take 7 still there will be 11 more which are remaining in the 
factory 3. So now uh, here the column is completed but anyhow only one row is left there is no need to worry about cancelling the column now here. So 40 and 70 cells are left. So out of this 40 and 70 now we will allocate to the lowest cell 40 now. So what is required here? 5 is required. So take completely 5 because there are 11 available here. Out of 11 if you take 5 still there will be 6 remaining. Now the left out cell is only this one that is 70 cell. So here what is required? 6 required. What is available? 6 is available. So take 6 completely and now check any requirement is left or any capacity is left. So nothing is left. Now multiply 7 into 10, 8 into 30 plus 1 into 40 if you do you will get the total transportation cost or nothing but the initial basic feasible solution so the initial basic feasible solution uh, by row minima method will be 1110 that is 1110 rupees will be the total transportation cost of uh, this problem by row minima method the third method is column minima method. In the column minima method instead of row wise in the last method we have taken row wise. Now the same uh, method you need to adopt by using the column minima. That means now we need to consider the column wise for allocating the units. Now while allocating to the first column you need to identify in the first column what is the lowest value. 40, 70, 19. So 19 is the lowest value and 5 is required, 7 is available. So try to allocate as many as possible to the first cell that is to the 19 uh, cell. So this one, uh, 5 required. So you can allocate all 5 that is required because there are 7 which is available. Uh, so still there will be 2 remaining in the factory 1. But now factory, uh, oh, the warehouse 1 capacity is completely utilized. You can strike out this column. Now, the left out uh, columns are only three columns here, second, third and fourth columns. So out of uh, these three columns again take the uh, immediate uh, next column. So 30, 38 you have. So out of these three values, 8 is the lowest value. So try to allocate number of units to this cell. So what is required here? 8 is required and what is available? 18 is available. So you can take maximum 8 uh, units or 8 goods to this cell. Take all 8 units which is required in the warehouse. So it will be 0 now. Now out of 18 you have taken 8. Still there will be 10 remaining in the factory 3. So that means uh, the capacity of warehouse 2 is completely fulfilled or the requirement is fulfilled. Now left out is third and fourth column that is W3 W4. So in uh, third column the lowest value is 40. So how many required? 7. How many available? 9. So though 9 is available I need only 7. You can transfer only 7 goods to that warehouse 3. So take all 7 whatever it is required but available is 9 so still there will be 2 more remaining in the factory 2 so what happens again now again the column is fulfilled here or nothing but the warehouse 3 requirement is fulfilled and the last warehouse requirement is not fulfilled we will try to allocate to the warehouse 3 now so in the warehouse sorry warehouse 4 in the warehouse 4 the lowest cost is 10 so first try to allocate to this lowest cost entry cell okay how many uh, required there uh, 14 is required so out of 14 but available is only 2 so maximum I can take 2 though I required 14 I cannot take all 14 because in the factory it is available only 2 so even the factory capacity 1 also completely utilized now left with only 2 cells now take the lowest cell value in the same column so 20 is the lowest cell compared to 60 and 20. So how many required? 12 is required but how many available? 
10 is available so you can take all 10 which is available in the factory 3 and out of 12 required uh, you have utilized 10 so still 2 more it will be remaining and the last cell which is available is 60 so what is required here 2 is required and how many it is available in the factory 2 again it is 2 available so 2 you can allocate now after allocating all the values please check any value it is left out in the capacity or any uh, values or any goods it is left out in the requirement so no requirement or no capacity is left out so now all the allocations is done so now multiply and add all the cell allocations you have done you will get the initial basic feasible solution of the column minima method that is rupees 779 when you multiply all the values in the cell you will get multiply and add you will get the 779 rupees as a column minima method initial basic feasible solution coming to the matrix minima method in this matrix minima method and which is also called as lowest cost entry method lowest cost entry method or matrix minima method means consider the entire matrix and in the entire matrix whichever cell is having the lowest value to that cell first you need to give as many as possible allocations so when you take uh, this table so the lowest cell value out of this matrix is 8 so now try to allocate as many as units it is possible to a, this cell so here what is required here 8 is required 8 units is required but what is available 18 is available I can take only 8 out of that so still 10 it will be remaining in the factory 3 so now which is completed or which is fulfilled here so warehouse 2 is fulfilled so you can strike out that one and leaving this column leaving this column the second column now try to look at the other values in the entire matrix which is having the lowest value 19 is the lowest value here and here and 10 is the lowest value here so now try to allocate to this cell uh, number of units what is required here 14 is required but what is available 7 is available so maximum you can take 7 though it is available uh, it is required 14 you cannot take 14 only you can take 7 because in the factory 1 it is available only 7 so after taking uh, 7 from factory 1 uh, what is remaining 0 is remaining you can strike out the first row now again in the matrix whichever uh, left here 70 40 40 70 60 20 so 20 is a lowest cell value now try to allocate to uh, this uh, 20 cell okay what is required 7 available is 10 but I required only 7 I can take maximum 7 okay so out of 10 if I take 7 3 again it will be remaining here so now what happened uh, which uh, column or row is fulfilled here so here column 4 is completely utilized or the requirement is fulfilled now left with the two uh, columns or the four uh, cell values 70 40 40 70 so the lowest value is 40 oh there are two 40s here this one 40 and this is also 40 when you get a tie like this uh, you need to select a cell which you can give maximum allocation to the 40 uh, whichever 40 you can give maximum allocation for example if I consider this 40 cell so here 7 is available 7 is required so available is 9 so maximum 7 I can give so if I take this one required is 5 available is 3 I can give 3 that means transferring at uh, 40 rupees only 3 goods is better or transferring 7 goods at 40 rupees is better so transferring 7 goods that is maximum number of goods at lowest cost is better so try to allocate uh, as many as possible to uh, the cell where you can allocate to the lowest cost so for this cell you can allocate 7 units which is required but here 9 it is available still 
two more remaining so that means uh, the column we can delete here okay again uh, when you check uh, these two cells 40 again uh, will be the lowest cell now again try to allocate to this 40 cell so how many required for this cell five units is required but how many it is available here only three is available so i can take only three here so out of five two it will be again required so the last cell left out is this one so here two you need to allocate to warehouse one and even the two more units it is available in the factory two so we can completely take the two to the respective set so now please check the capacity all zero warehouse requirements all zeros now we can add and multiply the cell values here multiply 7 into 10 plus 2 into 70 plus 7 into 40 like that if you do you will get the initial basic feasible solution from the uh, matrix minima method that is rupees 814 will be the initial basic feasible solution by lowest cost entry method in the next video we will be discussing about uh, Vogel's approximation method uh, thank you for watching the video thank you very much